Hello guys, glad to have you on board again. Today, just wanted to make a quick update because I've been looking at derivative markets today, both futures and the option markets. And I kind of uncovered something very interesting that I'm willing to share. So expect a bit of volatility specifically on Ethereum, but I'll try to explain everything about it. Remember that ETH is one of our assets to look at in uh, uh, the weekly context. Okay, remember still looking at the same old assets, uh, not trying to figure out what the hell's going on in Ukraine because so much disinformation out there we have decided the unperfect but still much better than uh, listening to the news flow uh, kind of vision which is looking at ETH looking at uh, um, uh, gold and looking at uh, Apple so so far all of these have been working uh, not in the same direction meaning that the market doesn't know where to go still a lot of hesitation uh, when it comes to ETH uh, this is where we've had a big move on the other days but it seems like the option traders are trying to bet against that one so we'll try to look at it okay remember what we said on the weekly based review that we had lots of mixed signals on ETH and Bitcoin as well uh, so that in these perspectives all of these range breakouts suggest that the likelihood for the prices to move f far away from these areas are very limited so we'll see all about that okay because I have uncovered quite some interesting information if we look at Glassnode still the same old perspective back then very limited supply so pay real attention if you're driving uh, your price action on the of markets because of course when the spot market is illiquid lots of shing, uh, 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 of rare things can happen like squeezes or whatever so very dangerous to go play on derivative markets when there is limited supply on the spot market itself in terms of market valuation still the same old things as well lots of divergences prices are very low on limited supply better have not to be some demand and as we've seen the demand is still low of course due to the very very complex context that we are currently navigating still there's one thing that really drove my attention is that you can you guys probably won't be able to see it but we definitely had a huge pickup on the short-term demand still leading me to believe that the bottom is in and that it's very very dangerous to try fighting against it but still it's a matter of time remember that when we go option we go futures we means there is a date there is a matter of time in the equation of course if you are an investor which I sincerely recommend you guys to be now in such a very complex market is not to pay attention to the short-term gambles with time in the equation but mostly just buy and fucking hold uh, I think this is definitely the smartest thing to do now looking at how complicated it is to navigate still when we look at the futures market by looking at these four metrics in here uh, uh, I like the fact that in the futures markets, okay, the leveraged open interest is reduced, so less leverage in the market, which is great. Uh, that means that we have less propension to try catching stop losses everywhere. The open interest have gone down after the liquidations and the lack of interest in the market. And of course, as people were giving, uh, giving themselves a shot to the downside, of course, we've had negative funding rates, which means, of course, at that point, market makers were legitimately going against those who were taking the short bets though they basically bought the dip anytime there was negative funding rates okay so when there was too much short sell aside demand they just got away from this and pushed prices up as we can see anytime they push price up it goes real quick because there is no supply the put to call ratio is of course going down so more call demand as prices go up which is inevitably slowing down the prices okay so tend to confirm the same old story as there are more derivative traders asking for calls the prices tend to slow down that doesn't mean they will reverse just means that once again open interest is are, are drive down which is great that means there are less speculators good stuff here if we look at ETH pretty much the same story in here leverage has gone down we have reduced the open interest and anytime we had negative funding rates everyone was basically buying as well as the market makers so it has rapidly pushed prices up of course and same thing in here a lot more calls than puts as the levels are way higher in here 
Okay, so in that perspective, uh, uh, we can see that there's more bullish demand on futures markets uh, for ETH as the put to call ratio is at 0.35. Okay, so a lot more people are buying ETH in the futures market. That's one metric I wanted to point out. Okay, here is another website that I got them liked and I discovered it recently. Very great website, by the way. Uh, lots of uh, data, very great data about option markets. Um, and specifically this one that I really uh, liked to see, which is the uh, put to call the demand on both buy and sell side. Remember that you can buy a put, but you can also sell it to someone else. So in that perspective, we can see what the uh, uh, speculative demands underlying the open interests were. This one is just highlighting whatever happens in the latest 24 hours, okay? So this is recent price action on both buys and sells of puts and calls. So of course, if you feel like you're lost, well, then just stop listening to this. If you know anything about the options, then you might want to look at it. Okay, another very good metric that is in, available in here is that the availability to see the supposedly max pain price, which is uh, normal, but the, the price in which market makers have the least uh, uh, money to pay for both puts and call uh, traders. And it's basically being visible over time. So which is great in here is that I've been putting a six month review. Or of course, you can look at more than that. This is real great. This, you see how prices were trading against the max pain prices. So this is where you can see heavy bullish demand. And of course, when the market deteriorated, we can see that there is definitely a price above the current max pain when it comes to Bitcoin, which means I tend to say Bitcoin sent the message broadly. We're out of the woods but that doesn't mean we're not gonna range first, okay? We're not necessarily gonna go bullish, but I think we're definitely uh, uh, having a bottom right now. Lots of other derivative subjects tend to confirm that thing, but it's a matter of time. When we go option, remember that time is definitely the biggest factor in the equation, the delta of time, delta T. So in that perspective, be real cautious because what I have found out and I wanted to share is that of course I see, and I like to look at asymmetric bets. And I've definitely found out some when it comes to over the latest 24 hours, the put to call trading activity on ETH and Bitcoin. Bitcoin has pretty much an equal rate. As you can see, there is new open interest, but there's basically just as much buyers and sellers of these puts and calls. Okay, meaning that there is a neutral market stance for this and there is no real clear evidence that the market is willing to change stance. So it's really supporting the neutral narrative. And in that perspective, lots of the calls that have been traded today were of the $45 uh, dollar mark, uh, 45K dollar mark. So still suggests that we have very likelihood to get there. Okay, but in that perspective, we were trading near the market prices, so nothing too fancy out there. What I think is very notable in here is when we look at ETH instead. As you can see, ETH, in terms of calls, most of the call demand yesterday was to sell calls. So there are far more call sellers than there are buyers, and this is really staggeringly visible in here in terms of asymmetrical bet. And we can also see that same asymmetrical bet in terms of calls, or in terms of puts. Some people have been heavily buying into puts with has a target of 2.5k. And there are more sellers, uh, more buyers of these calls, but there are of course some people willing to sell them. But which is important to see is on the call side, a huge asymmetrical bet in here where there are way more puts uh, call sellers than there are call buyers for those open interests. So someone some people are making clear bets that prices of ETH will not go above 31K because the asymmetric bet starts to plot out of 3200. So there is definitely some guys that says, okay, ETH is not going to make it above 32K. Okay, so they say if and only if best case scenario will go there and then we'll stop, which I said I would agree with because we have lots of range signals. So I think these bets are not this, that stupid, but they are still very dangerous. Remember that we are in a mature range. There is not any available supply. If there is any bit of demand, and we've seen that Bitcoin demands have started to pick up, so ETH demand will very likely come along with it. And if that's the case, then oh boy, of course, these guys will 
rapidly go out of the money and they will have to get the fuck out because they have sold coals, which means those who bought these coals will severely get in the money and make a lot of money, by the way. So it is, of course, a dangerous bet to make, but understandable somehow. This asymmetrical bet leads me to believe that we definitely have to look at if BTC charts to understand what they've done. Why are they gambling on the fact that ETH will not break above 32K and they are willing to sell calls to those who are willing to make bets above these levels and they're not having such activity on Bitcoin. So it definitely has been a gamble that has been set at yesterday. So this means ETH is one of the assets that I clearly have a definite look at. And I see yesterday asymmetric positions tend to believe that some people are making arbitrage trades between these two. And if we look at ETH BTC, well, we can definitely understand that. We had volatility alerts, meaning that, well, we can very well arbitrage these two things on volatile directions, okay? There should be volatility between the two. And if we have a look at where the trend channel is, well, the trend channel is basically settled in here. So we could drive down on this. This is where mostly demand would be. We can see that we're still in an upside context channel. So there is definitely going to be some buyers in here, but that also means that some people might be willing to gamble on the fact that ETH will underperform Bitcoin due to some lower demand, meaning that on this massive support in here, there's probably going to be a lot of buyers. No questions asked. If we get out there, there's going to be a lot of arbitragers buying ETH against Bitcoin. But the thing is that in the short run in here, in this price area, risks tend to say that people don't know what to do. There looks like it is a range and they look like in that range, ETH is a bit... Uh, uh, um, uh, less demanded or is demanded but at uh, lower prices than it would be for Bitcoin. The demand is strictly or mostly going into Bitcoin now. ETH is still expected to follow if and only if we succeed having an altcoin season indicator triggering because of right now it's really all about Bitcoin and we can definitely see that. So it is and it looks to me like some gamblers are making those bets that well we're going to keep pushing for Bitcoin and ETH will eventually be part of that equation but later. I have a different story for this. So once again, I think these guys are short-term sellers of calls. And in that perspective, they're better likely not to be squeezed out because if there is ever a bullish call for ETH, they're dead and they're going to have to rapidly get the hell out of it with massive losses. Uh, but in some other cases, I tend to believe that they will very likely hold the market under pressure for a little while, specifically on ETH, because they just want to make money and that's understandable. We're all here for the same reasons. But I tend to believe that this is going to be the end of this arbitrage. If we ever succeed pulling ETH to Bitcoin prices there, then that's a definitely big loss to make. Remember that, that means the ETH to Bitcoin ratio might have to drive down for 6%. So that's not something that I think is very likely going to last very long. So if we get such a thing, I think this is where we're quickly going to get some buyers and ETH dominance should rise back up again. So this is something to bear in mind. That also tells us that if they're making this asymmetrical bet, they might be very well covering themselves into Bitcoin if for some reasons shit were really going to hit the fan. But I would very likely say that, well, ETH could eventually try to send a volatile message within the range that we've highlighted. Uh, so, well, be cautious with that, okay? We could definitely have a rejection of this area for ETH and it's not necessarily going to be the end of the world. But also note that they've been accounting for the fact that we could go right up to 3200. So if you try to sell just by today because yesterday's actions on the option market was asymmetrical, well, that's a hint, but I don't think that's enough of a call to really go short term trading inside uh, the shorter time frames. I would say there is lots of daily uncertainty, very limited supply. So I think these are really dangerous bets to make. So anyway, today's actions will be limited anyhow and anyway by the 3200 and they are targeting 2500. So these are the massive boundaries in which we're locked up in two. So if ETH is trading any of these prices today, then you know where to trade. Bye guys.